Hey, Dr. Nascimento. Thank you very much for your EEG talks. I would like to know if there's any chance to have an EEG talk on neonatal EEG. Hey, Fabio. Hey, Brandon. How's it going? I'm good. Why are you calling me at 2 a.m.? It's been rough. I have this EEG and I see some birth suppression, but I'm not really sure. And uh, yeah, I need some help. Well, yeah, this looks um, like another case of pentobarbital intoxication. I, I Just at first page, that's my guess. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what else is, what's wrong with this, the patient? Uh, anything else? It, I think it's a pretty small patient. Um, I think it's uh, a baby. I don't know if that changes anything. What? <laughs> oh, those are small adults. That's all I know about them. We, we probably better get help. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so lucky. Hello, small adults, right? Yes, it's your friendly neighborhood pediatric epileptologist. Hello, yeah. guys. <laughs> Thank goodness. Awesome. Nice teacher. <laughs> Thank you, MD Aware from Shirley World MD. So <laughs> Very nice. we have this first page of an EEG. Um, just to start out, Fabio, look at the montage. Uh, is it what you were expecting, or are we missing maybe a couple of electrodes? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, it looks it looks off. Do you see any P seven, P eight? I don't understand. You don't even, do you think they just forgot? I, you yeah. said this guy was small, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, in babies and neonates, we use a modified montage. Uh, we use a nine electrode montage because their heads are so small, if you were to put all the normal montage electrodes on, they'd be squished together and they'd all have overlapping fields and it'd be pointless. Nice. So that's why th we use the special neonatal montage, okay. which does not have P7 and P8. Hmm. So that's the first difference you'll notice from your standard adult in a pentobarb coma. Uh, so on the very first page, <laughs> you see what looks like a burst, right? Mm -hmm. And then suppression. Uh, and for this baby's age range during mm -hmm. sleep, this is normal. Wow. And maybe this is not quite the best example, but we have some delta. You have your black bars are one second mm -hmm. uh, with some superimposed beta on it, delta beta complexes, which are also normal for this baby's age range. Mm -hmm. So, and he, sometimes the bursts are synchronous and sometimes they're a little asymmetric with one side starting before the other. Once again, that's also normal for this baby's age range. And we'll get into how you know what's normal and what's not. Okay. You can memorize it all or I'll show you some cheat sheets. Nice. Are those delta brushes, Audrey? Yeah, there, there are some delta brushes kind of yeah. uh, thrown in here. Some are better examples than others, but yeah, here's a delta wave with some superimposed beta. So that's an example of a delta brush. And for this baby's age, that's, that's normal. So here on the X axis, we have the conceptual age of the baby. And on the Y axis, we have what would be a reasonable interburst interval in seconds. So if you look at this, a 24 week, or if you were to do an EEG on them, could have an interburst interval of 60 seconds. Wow. Whereas a baby closer to the age of the baby we're looking at right now can have an interburst interval of around 10 seconds. Another uh, point is that how asynchronous those bursts are also mm -hmm. depend on gestational age. So on the right in this figure 4.2, mm -hmm. we see that in non-REM sleep, like what we're looking at, um, essentially before 30 weeks, it's completely asynchronous. And as the baby uh, ages, you're, you get a little more synchrony as time goes on. Mm. What's, what's the reason for the um, you know, increasing synchrony? Yeah, so they're a myelination that's just not done. They're just doing the best with what they have. You know, it's, it's hard to be a baby. Yeah. It's just hard. What's, what's the difference between asynchrony and a, a, asymmetric, Audrey? Is that the same? Absolutely. Uh, this comes up a lot. So when you're talking about symmetry, it's overall, are you seeing the same amount of activity-ish on the left and right, mm -hmm. essentially? Synchrony is, are they lined up? Yeah, so awesome. let's say... For example, spindles, sleep spindles. Fabio, do you know when they show up in a baby? Oh man. Once again, we have tables for this too. <laughs> it's around six to eight weeks, you might expect spindles to show up, but they don't become synchronous until two years. Nice. So that means in a six month old or a one year old, you might see a spindle on the left and a spindle on the right and see them at equal amounts on both sides, but they don't start to really line up and become synchronous mm -hmm. until maybe up to two years of age. Wait, so, so does that mean it's not birth suppression then? So what are you talking about? Inter birth <laughs> intervals. Dr. Dr. Listow was ready to... <laughs> That's right. You guys are ready to do some intervention on this kid. <laughs> well, it's yes. still birth suppression though. I, I, I still would call it birth suppression, but <laughs> the cause of it is different.
Yes. In, in my report, I would call it a discontinuous background during sleep. I would still refer to it an interburst interval because that's still accurate. Um, so the, it's the interburst interval that on that chart, that refers to the suppression periods, right? How long exactly. the suppression lasts. The flat parts, exactly. If when it kind of goes, you know, activity and then pretty flat. It looks pretty we, flat. Yeah, that we call that uh, trace discontinu because the guys that studied neonatal EEG were all French, apparently. So we have all these French terms for neonatal EEG. What's so, trace alternon? Exactly. That that's when the suppression part is not quite the suppressed, where you still see frequency activities. It's just mm -hmm. lower than the bursts. Yeah. And you see that as the kid starts to get closer and closer to term, essentially. Okay. So it goes tra trace discontinu and then gradually shifts to trace alternons and then, exactly. and and then, then just, just becomes continuous. And then activity moyenne, right? These French guys, uh, it just Does that means... just mean normal activity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Activity, <laughs> yes, exactly. and that's just uh, that poly. Good. We are. I don't want to you to ever that. write normal EEG ever again. <laughs> 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 that's a hard one. Like, but really, the kid's just waking up a little bit. Oh, yeah. it's yes, exactly. So, so this kid is now more awake, and you can tell because it's more continuous. You can also see more emotion artifact, mm -hmm. and you see there's just kind of a mixture of frequencies. There's some delta. There's a little bit of theta in there. There's some superimposed alpha, and that kind of poly mixture frequency is normal for the awake background in a neonate. And yeah, we can refer to that as well as active. Can I ask, what, so when do you, so there's, you know, predominantly delta here, and when do you expect to see sort of predominantly theta, and then when do you see, you know, no, no slowing? Uh, Oh, I see. So essentially, we start to see something that approximates an anterior posterior gradient with a posterior dominant rhythm around three months. Mm -hmm. I think that's when, you know, you start to comment on a PDR if you see one or not. Before two or three months, we generally don't comment on it. We see these kind of in that frontal-ish area, and mm -hmm. they can happen on one side or the other. And we call these uh, frontal sharps, or once again, French people invented all these things, right? So encoche frontale. Oh, and nice. essentially these are normal <laughs> and you can yeah. see them sometimes on the left and right not necessarily synchronously Los frontal sharpes. yeah here we go here's another one so essentially and it's not super spiky or super pointy but when you see these especially fp1 fp2 sharp waves in a neonate you expect that and okay only, i'll go to the only okay if they're frontal Yes, exactly. We have these frontal sharp wave transients you see here. Are, you can see them basically from 38 weeks all the way out to 48 weeks corrected gestational age. Okay. So that's normal. Uh, Dr. Westover, you're mentioning trace alterna. You can also see that in a term infant as well. Mm -hmm. We were seeing some beta delta complexes earlier, and mm -hmm. those are expected. You can see it all the way up to term. If you're about past 46 to 48 weeks corrected gestational age and you're seeing persistent frontal sharps, and particularly if they have a very epileptiform morphology, then those probably are epileptiform spikes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just something to keep in mind that if they're under 48 weeks of corrected gestational age and they have more morphology like what we just saw, that mm -hmm. they could just be normal frontal sharps. And oh, oh here's another oh, very nice frontal sharp. You yeah, know, it, it catches sharp. the eye, right? You think, yeah. oh, goodness. Yeah. Audrey, can we... Uh, can we measure and maybe maybe switch the time base that we can see first sure. and then calculate the interburst interval? Oh, sure. I'll go back to sleep. Sure. So um, basically, for example, during sleep, you'll have a burst here, you'll have a burst here, mm -hmm. and each of these bars is one second. So you could roughly count one, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine seconds interburst interval here. Mm -hmm. I think I may have seen some longer ones as well. Oh, yeah. So how old is this kid? This kid don't is 30. Tell her. Ah, oh, okay. Don't tell her, Fabio. Don't tell her. I won't. Nope. Actually, the interval is longer. One, two, uh, go ahead. Well, there's a little oh. in between. But they go up to maybe, uh, when I reviewed this record for real, like up to 12 seconds, okay. maybe even 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this kid had discontinuity during sleep up to around 12 to 14 seconds. Okay. So they're 35 weeks. Yeah right around there so and uh yeah this kid was a 36 week gestational age infant at one day of life mm. nice so it all makes sense it all comes together oh, oh i like it can See, we, can pediatric age is great it, it's uh, great fabio it's what you should uh, do I, sh I should switch i always tell brandon i'm gonna switch you know leave him alone <laughs> the adult world can we can we look at the synchrony too audrey um yeah 
it wasn't too bad, right? It was absolutely. It was mostly synchronous. Okay. Uh, while awake, I actually thought it was completely synchronous. Okay. During and non-REM sleep, with the quiet sleep that we were looking at, it was mostly synchronous. So okay. once again, it fits. It, it fits, yeah. Okay. In summary, in this thirty-six week corrected uh -huh. gestational age infant, uh -huh. we did see some examples of beta delta complexes, which are uh -huh. expected. Okay. We saw frontal sharps while awake, also expected. Uh -huh. His background while he was awake actually was pretty much activité moyenne, that polyfrequency. So it wasn't really trace alternant, but you could see that in his age range and that would be normal. Mm -hmm. We did not see sleep spindles. Once mm -hmm. again, he's over here, so that's expected. Mm -hmm. We did not see vertex waves and we did not see a posterior dominant rhythm, posterior occipital dominant alpha rhythm as listed here. Mm -hmm. And that's all expected for a guy that's living right over here. Got it. Beautiful. He's going to be fine. Yeah.